power sources out there that applied to connect to the grid like in 2019 that are five years old and still haven't been connected to the grid because of bureaucratic issues. Local authorities, they're given the hundreds of millions of dollars. Very few of them inside these municipalities know what's going on in the city. You know, I'll see posts that say things like EVs suck. And it's like, okay, well, what about them sucks? I mean, in, in what way are they inferior to a gas car? But my wife just went and purchased a used BMW i3. And the, the salesman in the dealership knew nothing, as you say, knew nothing about easy. Hi, I'm David from EV World News. Excited today to have a special guest with me. I have Rue Phillips from Skill Fusion. Uh, Rue, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, David. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Oh, it's always uh, fun to have guests. So my understanding from looking at Skill Fusion website is you guys do things in the training people to work on electric vehicle charging stations and infrastructure, correct? Correct. Uh, Skill Fusion is it's a software company, a digital platform, and we address the critical components in our ED industry, like the shortage of labor. Well, yeah, and like you said, there's a you know we talk about bureaucracy with what's going on with the the Biden's implementation of charging stations. You need grid upgrades, and grid upgrades a lot of times they're in the same boat where there's there are power sources out there that applied to connect to the grid like in 2019 that are five years old and still haven't been connected to the grid because of bureaucratic issues and getting necessary permits, getting the different governments to cooperate with those projects and getting them online. It's interesting kind of to see how that'll play out because obviously it's tough. you got the chicken and the egg syndrome a lot of times with people adapting to EVs because if you're in a place where you don't have any access to chargers and you don't own the home, you live in an apartment complex, then you've definitely got an issue of where you're going to go charge the vehicle. And I think you do definitely see a lot of that certain areas. So what, what do you think the fix is for a lot of the stuff on the federal level? Um, overcoming the bureaucracy, uh, it, it, it has to, it, it, you know, that that's, that's the number one, is what the local municipalities are actually doing with the funds. Um, so the, the roadblock there. Uh, another one, you know, I, I know this might sound crazy, but uh, I go back to that education. Uh, local authorities, they're given the hundreds of millions of dollars. Nobody, very few of them inside these municipalities know what's going on in the field. They're, they're, you know, they get this part of money and they say, oh, it's going to be distributed to uh, the you know, ED infrastructure. Uh, very few of them actually know about the technologies and understand it. Uh, they, you know, so... Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of roadblocks that uh, we have to overcome on a federal level uh, to, to make this work. I consider myself to be some of an educator here in the EV space. And a lot of what you're saying is is undeniably true because I have people all the time, you know, I'll see posts that say things like EVs suck. And it's like, okay, well, what about them sucks? I mean, in, in what way are they inferior to a gas car? Yeah, yeah. Or, you know, you get I get these typical comments from people and, you know, like, or that they all catch on fire. It's like, it, it's it's such a statistical anomaly that by miles driven, you have 1.5% the chance in an EV of catching on fire as you do in a gas car. It, it's a 60 to 1 difference. And yet, yeah, but they had a, they had a fire in the UK. They had a fire in China. It's like, well, you know... I see gas cars that caught fire, not all the time, but I, but I see them from time to time. I've never seen an EV fire, okay? I've seen lots of videos of them. No, I personally. Yeah, I've never personally actually seen one. I've never had a car period catch on fire. So if my odds are once, you know, 60 times greater than a gas car would catch on fire, it's such a statistical anomaly, but so much of it is just education and people hear all these things. And in the next 10 years, you know, you're talking about how EV adoption are going, you got these 800 volt chargers coming to the market, and then you have to have cars that hit them. Current cars can't accept it, but we know that in 10 years, a large portion of the chargers out there that are superchargers are going to be five minute chargers to add 200 miles to a car. But like you said, ed education is such a critical part because 
the average person has no clue that most people don't know about the how the tax credits work on buying an EV. The dealerships aren't educating them. And this is one of the reasons why I think Tesla's had such a success versus the dealerships. Even the dealerships don't really seem to educate the salespeople on how to sell an electric car. And it should be with the $7,500 tax credit as a down payment. You know, you'd think that would be the number one thing you'd lead off with. Absolutely. My wife, actually, I wanted to point this out, like used EV car sales are up. Unbelievably. Uh, absolutely. I think it's something like 20, 30% growth year over year. But my wife just went and purchased a used BMW i3. And the, the salesman in the dealership knew nothing, as you say, knew nothing about easy. When it came to the, the charges, uh, public infrastructure, he says, I know, I don't know anything about this. This is a nice car, but I can't tell you anything about it. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> it was incredible. It was a beautiful car, by the way, really reliable. When did you get that car? Uh, about six months ago. Were you able to get the $4,000 tax credit because it was a plug-in hybrid? That's, uh, no, it's full electric. It's This is a bad. Yours is the full electric one. Okay, so what what is is the range just 80 miles? No, it's a hundred and I think there's 140, 150. On, you know. Oh, nice, nice. Okay. You know, what's interesting uh, is the average distance for an EV driver, the, the average commuter, is 30 miles a day. 30 miles a day. Now, we have two EVs. Uh, I, I have one with a range of uh, 300 miles, and we have the local commuter uh, with a, about 140, uh, but we rarely, rarely, we charge the both cars once a week. Uh, I have I actually never use public infrastructure. There's no need to. 70% of, uh, as you know these figures, David, 70% of EV charging will be done at home. Right. It, 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 it's a huge difference. But at the same time, the early adopters all own houses and they have a garage. They have a place to use it. There's a couple of things. You know, I, I look at EV statistics in the United States versus um, the EU. In the EU, the average electric vehicle buyer owns 1.5 cars. So that they, there's a 50 percent chance that besides that EV, they also have either a hybrid or gas car, okay? In the United States, though, the average EV buyer owns 2.5 cars. Now, I know people that own three EVs, okay? But the most common is we own one EV and we own one or two other gas vehicles in our household, okay? And so, but at the same time, the early adopters mostly have access. I think most of your trade-ins are people who, D didn't have access to good charging infrastructure. Like they didn't have it at home. They didn't have, you know, access. But I, I know people that build apartments and everybody that's building apartments is adding EV infrastructure into their properties. One of the problems you get though is if you have too many level two chargers, you have to change the transformers. Now, Dad, let's talk about that because the new technologies are out there by the big companies like Schneider, uh, Eaton, they're coming up with technologies where you could put four, six, maybe even 10 level two chargers without upgrading the infrastructure by using smart energy management system. For example, if we if we uh, pull up in our EV and we're one of 10 vehicles and I've got 50% charge, uh, I don't need that, that, that energy uh, for the full uh, eight, 10 hours while I'm in bed. So what they'll do is they'll look at each vehicle and say, ha ha, number, car number three uh, needs a full charge. Car number two needs a 20% charge. Uh, in addition to that, it's going to look at the load from the, the existing infrastructure and it won't let the, the, the vehicles like uh, trip the breakers. It will shut the charges off uh, according to the demand. It's really, really smart energy management. It's a nice load balancing system. That's a nice, yeah. Um, I've seen some stuff. So I, I had the owner of a company called Emporia Energy on it, and they make EV chargers. They sell a lot of them on Amazon, but they make home chargers. So they make level one and two chargers, and they also make energy management systems for the house. 
And a lot of it is to help you manage both your solar and your EV and how you are both operating and having excess wasted energy in the house and only optimally charging the car when needed and trying to sell the energy in the car plus your solar to the grid when you can get the most money for it and then buy it back when it's uh, cheapest. Hi, I'm David with EV World News. If you like this video, then please press the like button. If you like the content and would like to see more videos on electric vehicles, then please hit the subscribe button. If you have some feedback for us, please let us know in the comments. Have a great day.